Welcome to the fifth edition of uh, Open Court with M.G. Akbar. Mr. Akbar needs no introduction, public intellectual writer, author of Kashmir Behind the Veil. I must mention this because the topic which we are discussing today is Kashmir in transition. Uh, joining me is Ratna Shukla Anand. Uh, um, Mr. Akbar, Kashmir is in transition. You see a lot of structural changes uh, taking place there in terms of connectivity on the economic side. Do you think this will help or not help change uh, hearts and minds? A transition uh, means what? Article 370. I'm looking that is a benchmark. Ah, as a, what Kashmir is getting at the moment really is a spell of good governance. Uh, it isn't as if uh, nothing has happened in the past. But this what is what might be called a sustained spell of good governance uh, with, uh, you know, uh, the Prime Minister Modi taking a personal sort of uh, charge to ensure that the development work is done at an unprecedented pace, right? This is uh, uh, something that all the people of India are getting, actually, <laughs> you know. It's, uh, except perhaps that uh, Kashmir has not been uh, given, uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, the structural development and so on and so forth that it should have had at the pace Absolutely. it should have had. But uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, that is really a question of uh, bringing... Kashmir is not the poorest part of India. I mean, people tend to forget that in the narrative. Yeah. Kashmir is, uh, is quite comparatively quite well off. If you look at the, all the basic parameters, per, you know, per capita income, spending, and so on and so forth. And city also looks good. If you go to Srinagar, it looks better than many of the places you find elsewhere in the country. Yes, indeed. I mean, you know, it's just that uh, uh, many of its needs are very special needs yeah. yes. because of uh, geography, topography, climate, and so on. Right. And those needs are being addressed. Right. But in the process of that addressal, uh, do you think a new social contract is in the process of being forged or uh, you think that will happen because of the years of militancy we have had in the past uh, and the violence and do you think there is a possibility that with the changes you mentioned uh, of a new social contract where Kashmir is at peace with itself and with the rest of India? Well, you know, I, I really don't understand the meaning of a new social contract. Kashmir has had a social contract with uh, the Union of India as much as a political contract with the Union of India from 47. Right? And uh, we must not fall into the trap of uh, seeing Kashmir as something vastly different. Kashmir is an integral part of India and has been ever since like all the other princely states who joined India, signed the you know, accession treaty. True. Right? After that, for a variety of reasons, uh, almost all of them to do with the uh, sort of sinister behavior of a neighbor to our West, who actually, Pakistan chose to attack Kashmir within uh, 10 weeks of uh, freedom. It was extraordinary. Right. And it was Pakistan which forced the issue. Sure. Right. Since then, Kashmir has become a victim of violence, victim of imported violence, victim of aggression, really. That is the right term for it. And therefore, its people have had to pay the price for that aggression and the political wrangles caused by that aggression. And uh, so, in fact, one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest uh, positives of the present situation is the fact that Kashmir is being now successfully, in stages, I'm not saying completely, protected from that aggression by forces who have uh, got sanctuary, who have got training, and who have got arms from Pakistan. 
uh, there is a cultural dimension to this as well, which is indigenous to Kashmir, which is called Kashmiriyat, or a very syncretic tradition. Uh, you think more needs to be done for it to evolve because there have been so many pressures on Kashmiri and militancy, ethnic cleansing and all that. So we need probably to revive that in a new form because you can't put the jenny back in the bottle. Look, let's be very clear about one thing. Culture is never hostage to politics. And in any part of a country, I would say very much in Kashmir as well. Because the Kashmiri, the culture of the Kashmiri people has thousands of years of history. Sure. It is not a 20th century phenomenon. It is not a 21st century phenomenon. Yeah. So, you know, their values, their systems, their belief, their music, their harmony, their bonhomie, their, you know, conviction in, uh, you know, the, the bhakti principles of what also has been called the bhakti movement and so on, but it long precedes it. That is the great strength of Kashmiriyat. So we really shouldn't uh, mix the two. Sir, so, uh, I want to know that the Kashmiriyat that you are talking about, is the Kashmiriyat really alive today? Or 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 is the Kashmiriyat really alive today? जी नहीं ये सब देखिए आप इस्लामिक शब्द इस्तेमाल कर गए ही शायद गलती कर रही हैं ये आप जब से इस्लाम आया है कश्मीर में तब से इस्लामिक वैल्यूज भी हैं लेकिन आप ये समझना कि इस्लामिक वैल्यूज अमन के बाहर हैं या उन अमन इस्लामिक वैल्यूज में अमन नहीं है ये गलती है और मतलब कश्मीर के लोग मुसलमान भी रहे हैं और कश्मीर के लोग कश्मीरी भी रहे हैं और इसमें कोई कॉन्ट्रडिक्शन नहीं है लेकिन सूफीज़म जिस तरह से वहाँ से धीरे धीरे जो है वो हुआ क्या विद सूफीज़म जैसा था सूफीम के वैल्यूज जो थे वो उसी को तो कश्मीरियत हम कहते हैं तो अगर है अभी तो उसकी वजह से है और आप क्या समझती हैं कि जो यू नो जनता है जो लोग हैं ख़ास तौर जो गाँव और शहर में फैले हुए लोग हैं अब एक वो कहते हैं ना अंग्रेजी में कि वन एड वन बैड एप्पल राइट एक सेफ खराब हो जाने से सारा औषध थोड़ी खराब हो जाता है लेकिन हाँ उसकी एक मतलब उसने के वो सेब के अंदर ही एप्पल के अंदर एक वर्म रहता है जहरीला वर्म है तो उसका भी असर रहता है लेकिन इतिहास में ये ऐसी बातें हो चुकी हैं और कश्मीर के लोगों ने और कश्मीर के वैल्यूज ने ऐसे चैलेंजेस को आ, के सामने अपने सर खड़ा करके इसको ख़त्म किया है यू मैंशन पाकिस्तान एज ए फैक्टर विच विशिएटेड द नॉर्मल फ्लो ऑफ कश्मीर डेवलपमेंट वॉट वॉज पाकिस्तान रियल ऑब्जेक्टिव वॉज इट geopolitical we talked about the headwaters of the indus rivers being one of the core strategic objective uh, or was it also validation of the two nation theory how do you see the pakistani approach towards kashmir you know the headwaters question while it of course it is important and i can understand that pakistan would certainly like to protect its water flows as india would like to protect its uh, water flows and rivers from which have their source in china so it is in our national interest to protect it i mean how could we expect brahmaputra for example to be vulnerable to chinese intervention so pakistan would have but you know the the uh, treaty between india and pakistan ensures that so there is no question of having any conflict on that situation so that is not a reason for conflict w was there any mention of the indus river waters when uh, pakistan began its aggression in <laughs> 1947 october there was no mention that is not a stated reason but yes what has impelled pakistan what has propelled pakistan is this spurious theory called the two nation theory which was based on a, a completely utterly ahistorical utterly foolish even stupid uh, doctrine which says that hindus and muslims cannot live together 
I mean, complete nonsense. It's a complete negation of all lived experience of the last thousand years. True. یوتھ کو ہم کس طرح سے اب مین اسٹریم میں لا سکتے ہیں وہاں کے اور کس طرح سے ہم پھر سے جو ہے سمجھ میں نہیں آتا ہے خیر وہ جو یوتھ ہے آپ ذرا سا جا کے دلی میں دیکھیے نا کتنے کشمیری یوتھ بیٹھے یہاں پر نوکریاں کرتے ہیں سب آتے ہیں بزنس کرتے ہیں تو وہ کیا مطلب کوئی الگ اسٹریم سے جہاں پہ جہاں پہ ایسا کہ دیکھیے نارتھ ایسٹ میں جب ملیٹنسی بہت زیادہ ہوتی تھی یا ابھی تھوڑی کم ہو گئی ہے اس وقت کمپنیز نہیں جاتی تھی کیونکہ جو بھی بزنس پرسن ہے وہ مطلب ایسے علاقے میں جانے سے جھجکتا ہے جہاں پہ وائلنس ہو اسی لیے دیکھیے گا کہیں بھی بارڈر ایریا میں لوگ جھجکتے ہیں کیونکہ ایک سچویشن ہے اب انتر دیکھیے فرق دیکھیے کہ ہماری جو سمسیا پاکستان کے ساتھ ہے جس کے وجہ سے ایک کانسٹنٹ سینس اور کانسٹنٹ تھریٹ آف وار رہتا ہے اس کے وجہ سے وہاں کے سارے بارڈرز علاقے میں ایک مطلب سہما سا لیکن آپ دیکھیے بنگلہ دیش کے ساتھ ہمارا بارڈر کوئی سمسیا نہیں کیونکہ وہاں پہ کسی کو نہیں لگتا ہے کہ وہاں پہ مطلب کوئی جنگ ہو جائے گا دو دیشوں میں تو اس لیے وہاں پہ مطلب بڑے بزنس کو تو چھوڑیے میں تو کہتا ہے کہ چھوٹا بزنس ہوتا ہے وہ زیادہ بلربل ہوتا ہے لیکن بنگلہ دیش کے ساتھ ہارٹ ہے بازاری مطلب گاؤں کا ہاٹ ہے گاؤں کا مارکیٹ ہے وہ مطلب بارڈر کے اوپر ہاٹ رہتے ہیں رتنا جی از ٹرائنگ ٹو سی از دیٹ وین یو کریٹ مور اکنامک اپرچونیٹیز ناؤ یو گٹ انویسٹمنٹس کمنگ ان ان ٹو کشمیر دیر از آلسو کوٹ اینڈ کوٹ ماڈرنائزیشن پرابلی وی گوٹ ہیو میٹروز کمنگ ان جموں ایز ویل ایز ان سری نگر So that obviously creates more opportunities and helps to, to yeah. lower the level of militancy. So to that extent, the, no, the no, link no. between the economic and the uh, well, social you know, is very clear. It, all that uh, is, uh, you know, is there any militancy in the desert, desert towns of Rajasthan, right? It, there isn't, but... Yeah, but there is no development either on the lines of Pune. Yes, no, there are, there are many reasons. There are many reasons which contribute to... But in the so, case of Kashmir... In Kashmir, yes. in Kashmir, abhi, the reason why UAE, you know, foreign investment, it's remarkable. Yes. This foreign investment which has come in is evidence and is, I mean, it is uh, again practical investment evidence. that people know that yes, now it is possible to get a return on your investment. So, right? So, uh, it's, it's like a, you know, COVID is a temporary phase, hopefully. which is <laughs> hopefully uh, that, but you know, the kind of political COVID that had settled because of aggression, people are now getting confident. Sure, and along with that is this, connectivity issues, for example, the Zojila tunnel, you know, 360. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Remarkable, remarkable yeah. piece of engineering. engineering. And then we have... Indian. Road. Absolutely. So it's the valley connecting with Ladakh, then Ladakh connecting with the rest of India through the Rotang tunnel, three others are coming up, and then we have further uh, road construction yeah. which is going on. So this is something which is extraordinary which is happening. Absolutely. And uh, probably that is going to... make the Kashmiris feel more mainstreamed uh, than probably before because you have this infrastructure development coming. You mentioned about UAE, foreign capital coming in. You know, I just don't think that the word mainstream, it's a, it's a word which should be eliminated from the... Why do you say so? Because they are, they already are. It is as if, you know, you are bringing them, to, them from some foreign space into mainstream. You know, it's a notion which has been uh, created by a misunderstanding of the political dictionary. They have been victims of aggression. 
right they are they have the culture and values of india sure. of harmony of something that belongs you know across the religious divide तो अफजल साहब मिलिटेंसी को अब जो है वो कंट्रोल करने के क्या कुछ दूसरे तरीके अपनाने होंगे क्या आगे जो है किस तरह देखते हैं आप उसको नहीं मेरे ख्याल जो सरकार कर रही है और लोग कर रहे हैं वहाँ पे उसको देखिए ये ये मर्ज को पूरी तरह ख़त्म करना मेरे ख्याल इतना आसान नहीं है क्योंकि जो लोग शरारत पर तुले हुए हैं जो फसादी हैं वो अपने फसाद को इतनी जल्दी भूलेंगे नहीं और उनको जब तक सहारा मिलता रहेगा तब तक वो कोशिशें अपनी करती रहेंगी लेकिन मैं समझता हूँ कि जो कॉन्फिडेंस अभी बन रहा है वो कॉन्फिडेंस एक वो भी एक इतिहास का अच्छा पन्ना है कमिंग बैक टू पाकिस्तान इन 2005 वी वर क्लोज टू मोडस वेवेंडी विद पाकिस्तान ऑन सॉफ्ट बॉर्डर Uh, no, are we talking about the Agra summit or no, post Agra post summit? summit? And which got sort of derailed with the Mumbai attacks in 2008. Uh, can we go back to such a formulation of soft borders where there is people to people contact you along the LOC and the IB or do you think between India and Pakistan there has to be something new which takes it does not is not rooted in that initiative? I'm very very convinced that a nation cannot have a partial soft border india has a border of pakistan right it's just not kashmir which has a border of pakistan right that the the border will be soft or hard depending on relations between india and pakistan right so if the border is going to be quote unquote soft then it will be soft in gujarat it will be soft in rajasthan it will be soft in punjab and it will be soft in jammu and kashmir in look at our other neighbors we don't have a soft border between uh, the two bengals but a hard border with agartala no we have a soft border or whatever it is medium soft light soft whatever uh, all around with the northeast as well as the east and that is the way it is we have a soft border with nepal as it should be whether it is in bihar or with up what i mean is that you cannot have partial soft borders so the ideas that were floated and actually those ideas really emerged um, with the agra summit now uh, where the uh, general musharraf brought and uh, there was much discussion of a uh, a package which included many other ideas uh, but uh, from the, and, and all through you know it has been we have to be very clear that uh, the situation the whole situation has to be resolved and you have to remember why precisely the agra summit failed the agra summit failed for only one reason because pakistan was not willing to condemn terrorism or kuch nahi yeah exactly so as long people often talk about what is the solution to the problem but it's a very simple solution pakistan must abandon terrorism and then we will have a solution now am i just saying it as a theoretical reality no i am saying it through practical experience for a long while uh, east pakistan was a sanctuary for terrorists who were operating in northeast in our northeast to because of proximity things changed right after the liberation of bangladesh also it took time jaldi nahi hua it took time but when over a process uh, we saw and haka proved that it was no longer going to be a sponsor of terrorism then everything gradually slowly but effectively fell into place west ke west pakistan ke sath we jis din wo terrorism band kar denge us din mahol theek ho jayega 
India, we have absolutely no interest in, uh, in war or violence because war is never a solution. War, in fact, is the mother and father of problems. On that note, Mr. Akbar, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.